All right, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right, this is going to be part nine of the Take Heed series. Go to Luke chapter 12. We're going to read from Luke chapter 12. Verse 1. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of multitude of people, insomuch that they trode one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Now, if you don't know what leaven is, in Matthew 16, 12, it says, Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now, if you don't know what a Pharisee is, a Pharisee is a Jew. And the Sadducees were Jews too, but the Sadducees really don't exist anymore because they were uh, the temple, the people that did all the rituals in the temple. And since there's no more temple, well, that's it. All right, so beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. You could say the same thing today. Beware the leaven of the Jews, which is hypocrisy. Verse 2, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. Boy, I'm going to have a lot to be ashamed of. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in the closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. See, people, you have a body, you have a soul, and you have a spirit. The, body, the Bible teaches clearly you have a body, a soul, and spirit. Three parts equals one man or woman. Be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you, whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two farth farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Um, those of us, uh, those, of, uh, those that are bald, uh, I better not even go there, right? So, those those are the, the those are those are that are bald uh, don't have to count very far, right? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Also, I say unto you, listen carefully. Whosoever shall confess me, Jesus, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. You see, people, if they take you into the synagogues and say, do you believe in Jesus? And you do like Peter did and say, I, I don't know him, you know, and, and you die before you change your mind. I mean, Peter... Peter uh, Peter repented of that, what he did, right? But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall, it, uh, against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. Now, if you don't know what blasphemy against the Holy Ghost was, it was when uh, the Jews were saying that Jesus cast out the devils by the power of the devils, that he cast out the devils by Beelzebub. So, basically, they were blaspheming the Holy Ghost. I guess I better prove that. Mark chapter 3. 
All right. Uh, Mark 3 and verse 22. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, now what's a scribe? The scribes were the copyists of the, the scriptures. They were experts in Hebrew language, and they would copy the scriptures. We didn't have printing presses back then. Everything was handwritten. So they were generally, generally scribes were considered pretty knowledgeable about the law since that was their job, right? And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he called unto them and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. See, they were claiming Jesus by the power of the devil was doing his miracles. And the Jews to this day teach this. Oh yeah, they sure do. You ever wonder why you witness to a Jew and they can't, they, they absolutely don't hear it? Because... Many of them that teach this stuff that we just read, they've, they've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. They will never have forgiveness. Never. And God has hardened their heart, and they're, that's it. It's over. Now, I'm not saying all of them, but all the ones that teach this, they're toast. They're going to be crispy critters. And... You know what? There was one one time I when in my drug days that uh, I blasphemed Jesus, but I didn't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And quite frankly, I'm surprised he didn't just kill me and throw me into hell. And I deserved it. Luke 12, verse eight. And I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. Listen carefully. And when they bring you unto the synagogues, now, who hangs out in the synagogues? Take a guess. And when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. So if you're brought into the synagogue and you're going to get your head cut off or killed, don't think about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. Verse 13. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed. Ah, here's where we get the take heed part for this lesson, right? Take heed and beware of covetousness. What is covetousness? It means you want something really bad. People know this. A uh, common word for this would be greed. Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, 
in other words, this this guy's a farmer, and he had a a big bumper crop. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. In other words, his barn is full. All right. What do you what do you do when you got a full barn? Well, verse 18. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? You know, if you've got a barn full of food and you don't even have any place to put it, why don't you look around and help your neighbors out? You know, or, or the people that don't have anything. I mean, really? I mean, that's the world. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. And God says, Thou fool, this night shall this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So when you're dead, all the stuff that you've acquired, where's it going to go? You know, I was a volunteer chaplain at the South Florida Veterans Cemetery. And uh, let me tell you something. I never saw a hearse with a trailer on the back or a casket with a trailer. You know, I, I just never seen that. So when you die, you ain't, you know... You, you, you can't take it with you. Verse 21. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Now, what's raiment? Clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. They don't have any barns, right? And God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? Can you, uh, can you make yourself a foot taller by thinking about it? No. Then ye then, be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies how they grow, they toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So then God so clothed the glass, grass, if then God so clothe the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O ye of little faith, and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubt for mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather, seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock. That's, that would make a good another series, Fear Not. Fear not, little flock, for it, little flock, it, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens which that faileth not, where no thief, thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves, like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, 
that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not suffered his house to be broken through. But ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Then said, uh, then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise servant, steward? Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, find him, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that uh, servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maid servants, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant, which knew, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. You see, those that know the Lord's will and are not prepared and don't do, they're going to be beaten with many stripes. They're going to get whipped. Uh, I wonder if that's why I've been spanked so many times by the Lord. Uh, just, yeah, just a thought. Verse 48, But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. You know, because he didn't know any better, right? For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I, if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straighted, straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I'm come to give peace on earth? Peace on earth? Don't you hear that every Christmas? Joy to the world, peace on earth? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth? I tell you, nay, but rather division. Do people separate themselves because you tell them the things of the Bible? Good. You're doing God's work. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five and one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said also to the people, when ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, there cometh a shower and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites! Ye can discern, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that ye cannot discern this time? Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him, lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very last might. Uh, basically, you know, this could have a heavenly meaning or 
and also an earthly meeting. If you owe somebody something, agree with them. Pay it. It's better than going to court. Really, think about it. Because in the, the courts of this world, you're never going to get justice. Never, never, never. Did I say never? Never. You will never get justice in this world. Here's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 40. If any man will sue thee at law, oh, lawyers love this verse. If any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. A uh, cloak was something like a, it's sort of like a cape. And uh, it, it's like a blanket. So if somebody's suing you for your coat, give him the coat and your cloak. You know, that's what Jesus said. If they, if they want something you got that badly, give it to them. So uh, some people say that's the lawyer's favorite verse in the Bible. All right, let's go back to Mark chapter 3. Uh, we just read in verse 30, it said, Because they said he hath an unclean spirit. But in verse 31, There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude said about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. Think about that. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries, and John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.